thanks for clicking on my video. Today it's more Corvette stuff. We're working on wires today. The wiring on this car is rough. People, you know, cut wires off that belonged and added wires they didn't need. And I think I'm going to start with the choke wire. We'll get the electric choke working right. Go from there. Let's take a look. So, half the choke's hooked up, you know, the aftermarket simple easy to do ground part this car originally came with a carburetor that had an electric choke and I think I've located the original choke wire I'm, I'm hoping this is it and inside the car there's a fuse for this circuit and a choke relay and it seems to be that is working too I'll take you inside the cab there and show you what's up with the choke relay and then we'll come out here after we start the engine and see if we got power out here to run the choke. Okay, that there is the choke relay. And I've verified on the brown wires, one's supposed to be ground, one's supposed to be power. I've got it. This green wire and this blue wire here is, uh, the green wire goes up to the choke light in the gauges, and the blue wire, I'm hoping, is the one I showed you under the hood. I'm going to turn the key on and start the car and the test light should light up when we start the car and then with the engine running we'll check that blue wire out there and hopefully it's the right wire, the one we're looking for. So that's good, that's what we wanted. Now we'll go check under the hood. Alright, you guys watch that test light. I'll start the engine, we'll see what we got. Trace the blue wire from the relay through the firewall out into here. I've been digging on this cable here or these wires, and that's the only blue wire in there other than this one. And that goes to the blower motor resistor, so it's not that. Stay tuned. Well, I've opened this loom up and I've followed this blue wire back to the bulkhead connector. And I, it's just, it's, the bulkhead connector's under that brake booster, and it's down underneath there, and it's like nearly impossible to get to. And then inside here, down under the dash there, that bulkhead connector is behind the fuse box or fuse panel. So that's ridiculously impossible to get to, too. I don't see any evidence that this blue wire we're chasing has been tampered with, you know, anywhere other than... Well, where did it go? There it is. I found it. There's no evidence this wire has been tampered with except here on the end where they cut it off. So it's broke between here and that relay in the cab that we checked with the test light. So I'm just, it's come to the point where it's more work to chase it and fix it the right way, like through the bulkhead connector or find the broken wire. Sometimes you just got to run a new wire and that's what we're going to do. I have run a new blue wire for the electric choke. So we'll start the car up now. You guys watch that test light and see if it comes on. Alright, for the first time since I owned this car as long as the choke coil is not burned up, the choke will come off. So we'll put that right back on there and start it up again. And we'll watch the choke and see if it comes off.
a fully functioning choke. So in the process of hooking this blue choke wire up, I started, this is the blower motor resistor and this is the high blower motor relay. I started hooking some of those wires back up to try and figure out why the fan doesn't work right, you know, for the heater. And I got to digging around and first all of all, the ground was unhooked for the blower motor relay. So I hooked the ground up and the blower motor all three or four speeds start working. So then we turned the key off and thought, yep, it's all fixed and you know, it was quiet. We heard the fan running for the heater with the key off. So I dug around and dug around and dug around and I finally opened this loom up a little farther down than where I'd opened it to find that uh, blue wire for the choke. And I found these little bastards on here. And people they just don't use these. If you got to tap into a wire, find a better way to do it. But anyway, somebody had added an extra wire down to the starter that's hot all the time. It was this pink one right here. It's hot right here all the time. It's hooked directly to the battery, in other words. And they tapped it into this brown wire. I don't know what the brown wire does, but it was causing me all kinds of fits. So we chopped that off and started checking things to make sure they worked. And sure enough, the first thing is, is the fan, the blower motor quit running with the key off. So now the blower motor works the way it's supposed to, so that's great. And I think the tachometer that read 2,000 at 500 and, you know, 9,000 at 2,000, I think that might be better. I think it might be working more the way it's supposed to. And the blue wire we put on for the choke is still working, so I'll dig into this wiring some more. I, I'm still looking for the green wire that comes out of the harness over there and goes to the cylinder head on that side for the temperature gauge. I'm still trying to find that. I've been looking for the green wire that's supposed to hook to the coolant temperature sensor. This is not here, but we're going to get one because we want that gauge to work in the dash. And I've been looking and looking and looking. There's green wires everywhere. Somebody even added extra green wires, but Poked down under here, I finally found what looks like might be the wire I've been looking for for forever and a day now. So, I'll put you guys in the cab, and you can watch the gauge while we test on this wire. The best way to test these older car gauges is if you think you got a gauge problem or a sender problem is, is you can check the gauge and the wiring real fast. And what you do is, is you turn the key on, pull your wire off your sending unit that you suspect is bad, and just ground it out against the engine. Your gauge should peg. It should just whoop, go right over. And if you do that, and you got a gauge that's not working, but you ground your wire and the gauge works, it's your sending unit. If you do that and nothing happens, you got a wiring or a gauge problem. So I'll put you guys in there and you can watch the gauge and we'll see what we got. Alright. You guys watch that temperature gauge real close. And then I got the key on. And now I'll go out there and I'll ground on that wire. And that gauge should move if the wiring in the gauge is good. Of course, if it don't move, it could either be the wiring or the gauge. Or this isn't even the right wire. But you watching? Here I go. Okay, I'm grounding it. Got anything? No, nothing. That's what I was afraid of. So... Now we can still, there's a printed circuit on the back of those gauges. That might be the problem. We might have the wrong wire. That might be the problem. So I'll pull those gauges out and we'll back probe the green wire that goes to the temperature gauge. And we'll see if we even got the right wire. Hang on a second. So I got the gauge panel off. And this is the printed circuit I was talking about. You see those four little tiny studs, bolts, nuts? That there's the oil pressure gauge, the back of it. And if we follow this trace right here, this circuit board is bad. That's the copper wire inside the plastic that's broken, deteriorated. If you really had to, you could fix that with some solder and wire. But fortunately for this car, we can get a new printed circuit board. So 
I got one of those on the way, but we can still back probe that connector there that plugs into the gauge panel and check and make sure that's the wire we want and it has continuity. You know, it's not broken. And man, I've got the interior of this car more tore apart than the interior of a crackhead's house. But, I mean, we are, we are working on copper wiring, right? <laughs> Okay, I got the test light probed into the into the green wire there, and uh, I'm going to ground the green wire out under the hood, and the other end of the test light's hooked to the positive on the battery, so that should light up if this wire that we think is the green wire for the gauges, for the oil pressure gauges, or not oil pressure, temperature gauges, right, so you guys watch that light and let me know. Got anything? No, nothing. So that wire is either. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I didn't have the test light hooked up. Let's try this again. Now, maybe things will work out right for a change. Oh, look at that. We finally found our green wire. So we'll have to wait on the oil pressure gauge until. Uh, a printed circuit board comes and a sending unit and I'm confident that you know the gauge is probably ruined too so we'll probably have to get a new coolant temperature gauge too I guess it wouldn't surprise me let's uh, let's move on to the gas gauge all right so now I'm at the fuel sending unit for the gas gauge and this is really shocking on a Corvette, you just take uh, four screws off and your little flapper thing there comes out. And this little rubber boot thing comes out. And look at that. There's the sending unit and the pickup for the gas gauge. It's just, it's right there. You don't have to drop a gas tank or do any of that weird stuff. And this here's the wire for the fuel gauge. So we're just gonna do the same thing we did as that coolant temperature gauge. I'm just gonna ground this out well, you guys watch the gauge and let me know if it works. Alright, it's already kind of pegged it looks like. I'm turning the key on. Ooh, we got stuff going on. Hang on, you watch that gauge, let me know what happens. What happened? I moved it. Anything going on? Nothing? I can't see. Oh, it's pegged hard. You know, that's kind of weird. Let me hook it back up. What do you got now? It's hooked up, mostly. Is it better? Did it move? Well, wait a minute. It's not hooking up. Come on, get on there. There we go. I think it's on. Did it move? Whoa, that's pegged hard. Well, I think we've got other issues there. I guess we'll look at that circuit board a little more. The circuit board on the back of the gauges, that is. All right, it's still this uh, it's still this printed circuit board causing us trouble. If I follow this trace around that was keeping the uh, coolant temp gauge from working, it comes right on over here to the fuel gauge too. So I'm going to do the same thing we did with the uh, coolant temp sensor wire with the fuel sensor wire. I'll just uh, ground it out and we'll see if it lights the test light up. And then we know the wire's good. We'll just have to wait until this. Uh, new printed circuit board comes and then we can probably put a brand new fuel gauge and a brand new fuel sender in it both on top of all you know we've already done too hang on a second let me find the test light and we'll check the wire okay you guys watch the test light I'm gonna go ground it out uh, how about that well, our fuel sender gauge wire is good, so great. Now we just need a circuit board and hopefully the gauge is good and hopefully the fuel sender is good. 
Now I guess how many gauges have we got left on this thing? Okay, I can't. There we go. So we know the gas gauge wire is good. We know the temperature gauge wire is good. The volt gauge was working. The oil pressure gauge was working. Now we got oil temp. I'm going to have to do some following on that printed circuit on the back because this is like a Corvette only deal and I don't have a clue what color wire comes out the harness under the hood for the oil temp. So hang on a second, let me go figure that out. Alright, I got a little word of caution for you guys when you've been working on stuff that's been worked over and kicked around and who knows what all's been done to it, kind of like this Corvette. But anyway, I was testing on my gauges, and my son came in to work on his project, and I was telling him about this bad trace, and I was having to wait for parts, and he says, Oh, I can solder that back together, I can fix that for you. So I let him, you know, just so we could keep testing on the gauges. So, in essence, this trace goes from this pin here to this one here. He just hooked a wire on there, and he says, Here, throw that in there and see if you can chase your wires down some more. So the first thing that happened, as soon as I turned the key on, boy, sparks flew from back here and we blew the gauges fuse. Oh, that got me to thinking, this is the, uh, well, let me see. It's the temperature gauge. That green wire we were looking for hooks to that. Anyway, so I'd have got this new circuit board and put it on and no, not any difference and burned the trace up right away because back here on the back side, See these fiber washers? They didn't have, whoever was in here last, took these fiber washers off and put them on this, which isn't grounded or touching anything. So that's what caused this failure in this printed circuit was because these two pins were grounded and one of them took the power. So, you know, because it burned this trace up, it didn't continually blow the gauges fuse, it just burned this trace off and that was that. So, keep an eye out for stuff like that. You just never know what you're going to run across or what kind of stupid problem you're going to have because something got left out or disappeared or not put back together right. So now that this has been, you know, kind of fixed, we hooked the wire back there after we found out this was ground and I was able to chase the, the coolant temp wire. It has continuity. The coolant temperature gauge is good. The uh, gas gauge is good, but the sending unit is bad. The oil pressure gauge works, and the uh, volt gauge works, so that just leaves us here with the oil temp. And it looks like this car originally had a clock in there where that oil temp gauge is, because all the oil temp gauge has hooked to it is a trace that's powered all the time, like a clock would be, and then these two extra wires. So we could actually get this gauge to work, we just need a ground wire and a signal wire from a sending unit. So we'll probably run wires through the firewall and mark them out there and when we get this all back together maybe we will put a sending unit and I don't know it'd be nice to have maybe transmission temperature gauge that'd probably be better than a engine oil temperature gauge I don't know but I think we can make this work so now we're just waiting on parts now I gotta add a fuel sending unit to it and I guess I found out some useful information this era of GM car 70s and 80s Zero ohms is zero ohms is that. so if you're testing your wire like I showed you with that green wire for our coolant temp, if you ground your fuel sender wire out and your gauge goes to empty instantly, well that's out of gas or zero ohms. And if it comes over to full when you hook it back up because you got a full tank, that's around 90 ohms. So you can actually check both sides if you find a 90 ohm resistor, just put a 90 ohm resistor between your signal wire that goes back to this gauge and ground and your gauge should read fullish but in my case it looks like I have a bad sender so I think I'm going to pull that out because I've seen where the wire just comes unsoldered that hooks to the resistor inside the sender and I'd hate to spend a hundred another hundred bucks on a fuel sender when all I had to do was solder a wire back together so I'll go take that apart and if I find something of relevance I'll share it with you well, I, I, I got it out. I don't know how. I just Did you know manhole covers are the only things that they make that 
you know, if you make a circle bigger than another circle, it won't fall through. But if you do that with a square, you can tip it sideways and it'll fall through. This was kind of like a manhole cover. I was really starting to think that it was not coming out of there. It just kind of suddenly fell out. You remember when I said I'd hate to buy a new sender unit if it was just a broken wire? Well, if we get in here, we can see that this is pretty corroded up here at the top. And if I put my meter on it up here on the top, we get the same thing we had when we was checking the wire, which is essentially an open circuit. So right here is the right here is the part where the wire for the gauge hooks, and here's where the ground hooks. And if you like the meter there, that's what we got is an open circuit. But if we go down here and just Put one wire right on the metal of the sending unit and another one right where the wire comes out of the sending unit. Oh, now the meter auto off. We good? Can we go? Is it working? Come on. Anyway. There. If I just put my probe down here Right there where it comes out. Look at that. We got the uh, zero empty. And the 90 or so we're supposed to have when it's up this way. Here, show them the So anyway, we don't have to buy a sender unit. We just got to get this little clip off and brighten it up and shine it up and put it back together. So. We might actually have a functioning gas gauge today. Alright, I got it all cleaned up and polished and I think it'll work now. I'll put you guys in the car and you can watch the gauge and I'll run this up and down and you can let me know what happens. Alright, you guys watch that gauge and I'll go work the center. Empty! Is it working? Half. Full. Well, that's perfect. That saved at least 120 bucks there. We can splurge on something else now, like, I don't know, something. Okay, I got a new printed circuit board to put on here. And before I put it on there, I wanted to show you a thing or two. We figured this trace here was burned up and that's what caused it. And that trace just hooks this stud to this stud. And if I remember right, it was the power to temperature gauge. Lost everything there. It was the power wire to power the temperature gauge. So we could absolutely fix that with just a piece of wire from that stud to this stud. But, you know, Corvette stuff. Might as well put a new circuit board on there. I also wanted to show you that uh, this gauge right here, I think, was supposed to be a clock. Because it's an oil temperature gauge now, but we got this hole here where the little stem stuck out where you could set the clock with. That's okay though, I'd rather have a temperature gauge, but we're going to have to figure out how to wire it. When I ordered my printed circuit off the internet, they got lots of pictures of them and lots of what years they fit, but none of them said anything about with oil temperature. Some of them did say with clock though. And if we follow this trace here that is hooked to the oil temperature gauge, that should have probably been a clock, we find this wire is powered all of the time. So I thought about just using that to power the gauge and you know one of these will be ground and one of them will be a signal from the temperature sender. But that won't work because if you do the math on how much a gauge draws, if this gauge is hooked to power non-stop like a clock would be, it'll run the battery down too fast. So we'll figure out which, which one of these is power and which one is ground and which one's signal. And we'll just hook some wires on the back of here to another gauge for the ground and for the power. And then we'll have an oil temperature gauge. So I'll make some jumper wires and we'll set this up and see if we can figure out how to wire the oil temperature gauge. 
All right, here we go with the new printed circuit board installed. For you guys that was watching and really paying attention when I was seeing if the gas gauge worked or not, and some of you might have noticed when the low fuel light was still on, when the gauge read full, that's because there's a module that's supposed to twist in here that runs that light. And if you don't have the module, you just take the bulb out of the bulb holder and put it back on and that light won't bother you. This is what I ended up with the, for the clock conversion. This tab here is hot all the time. And uh, that's what kept, kept your clock running, even with the key off. So put a piece of tape over that so it won't ground out against nothing. And then this is the ground wire, and that's the ground wire for the oil pressure gauge. And then this here is the power wire with the key, the way it's supposed to be. And I think that's the gas gauge or something, but that's hooked up the way it's supposed to, and that's the signal wire. We'll run that out and find somewhere to send a sending unit or screw a sending unit in. And then we'll have an oil temperature gauge that functions. So there we go. And here we go. Here's the refactory gauge cluster. And if you check her out, it even acts like everything's gonna work. The volts, the oil pressure. I know the two temp gauges are gonna work because I grounded the wires out to check them. And there goes the there goes the volts. Well, oh, there's a bad glare, huh? And if we turn the lights off, look at this, the gauge lights even work. So, there's the center vent. Now the hole over here in the dash that you can't see now because it's dark. We'll work on that. We'll do the tachometer and the speedometer next. So now we're working on the speedometer tachometer cluster. And uh, the tack works, but it's it doesn't read right. It's way faster than the engine's actually running. And this new circuit board is supposed to fix that. So we'll throw that in there. And then this kilometers an hour speedometer, I, uh, I guess we're just going to hope it works. I did take a screwdriver bit that fit back in here. It's a square and spun it with a drill. It does read, so hopefully this goes okay. And then this printed circuit board, unlike the center gauge cluster where we probably could have saved it and used it, I don't know if it shows up on camera, but the traces on this thing are just greener than green. They're really corroded. So on this, it's best to just replace it. So I'll throw this together and show you what it looks like if I come across anything of consequence to tell you about or warn you of, and we'll go from there. So some things of note here to warn you about. These pieces here, the contacts for the tachometer, which is there, and you got to take the screws out of the front to get the tack out. There's a bezel and then screws around the tack, just like the speedometer there. And then you might be tempted, if you're working on this circuit board, to just bend these tabs up right here. But don't bend those up. Get inside here and squeeze on these clips down at the very bottom just as close to the bottom of the bezel as you can get and then they'll kind of click and release and you can shove them out. And once they start shoving out then you can get in here and pull them out. And it'll be easy to see where they go because there's a notch and it'll only you know drop in the way it goes. And it looks like you just take the nuts off of that and put the new circuit board on and off you go and then put it all back together. I've got the printed circuit board on the back of that gauge cluster and I just put a couple of the light bulb holder things in the back just enough to hold that printed circuit on there. I just want to see if the tack works and is going to be accurate. And also this car is supposed to have a tack filter which hooks up under the hood to the distributor and that's supposed to take the wiggle and pulse out of the needle. Let's take a look at that. So this is the tack filter, and I think it's probably a, a condenser, a resistor, and I don't know. That's probably it. And you absolutely have to bolt this metal can to ground. I'm just going to go right there with it. 
it didn't come with instructions. You got to get on the website. Well, I should say, fortunately, the website I bought it from had instructions on the website. The brown wire goes to the distributor, and the white wire goes to the wire that's the tack wire that goes in and runs the tachometer in the car. They just had this plugged into the distributor, which is how I always thought they were, but everybody on the internet says, oh, you got to have a tack filter. So I'll bolt this metal can down and we'll try the tack out and see what we got. Tack filter is mounted and wired and uh, let's start this thing up and see how the tack armor works. Well, that still seems to be way faster than the engine's actually running. And just as bouncy as ever, but uh, I guess that's what we got. Uh, if Typically, if you got a stone stock set up, you got a GM tack in the dash, and it reads wrong like that, probably what has happened is somebody has put in a performance module down there in the distributor and that performance module needs another add-on doodad box for the tack to read right. Maybe we'll investigate that later on, but uh, I'd like to start putting back together on this interior and getting the gauges at least wrapped up because we still got to get the windows working. We still got to get the fans wired up right. And then, I don't know, door seals. Weather stripping, all the weather stripping shot, so there's still lots to do. And there we have it. The gauges are all fixed up, back together, and work. I think I'm going to end the video here. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to end the video here. This had been apart so long the dash was warped and didn't fit right. And the only thing that holds it in is this plastic pad. It's just the screws go right into this foamy stuff. So it ain't good, but... That's how they made it.